why don't we uh, introduce ourselves, uh, starting with Dimitri. Sure. Does it work? Is it on? All right. Uh, I'm Dimitri, working at Pivotal for a few years, and I'm currently a product manager for Bosch. Yeah. My name is Stormy Peters, and I just recently switched to leading developer relations at the Cloud Foundry Foundation. So all of you probably, if you're on CF Devilist, got a survey from me. Please fill it out. That's my pitch. Hello, my name is Jan. I work at SAP with the OpenStack CPI, currently replacing my PM because he's gone. Uh, hi, Jeff Hobbs. I'm the uh, Director of Engineering for Cloud Foundry Efforts at uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and I was the CTO at Active State responsible for Staccato that uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise acquired last year. And hi, I'm, I'm Dr. Nick, and someone took my seat, so I'm going to stand here. <laughs> Which is a little awkward. Um, no. Not that seat, like that seat, you set my seat. Um, thank you very much to the four of you coming along for our day. And um, I want to, uh, just to warm up and somewhat to introduce their role and their perspective so that the character fleshes out, especially as we get to Jeff. Um, you know I wouldn't have agreed to this panel if I'd watched you MC first. Watch me MC first. <laughs> You'll be fine, you would be fine. Uh, question for Dimitri. Um, and I have to ask Dimitri a question that has no context to anything we've talked about today since he was outside the entire time. Um, so, Dimitri, in five years' time, describe what Bosch is like. Oof. Um, faster. Uh, probably, probably everywhere. So far, at least, it's been going well with the customers. Uh, and probably supporting uh, you know, some of the features that you all want. You know? No monit, <laughs> more importantly. No monit. Um, that pretty much covers it. <laughs> no monit. <laughs> so will we upgrade the version of monit between now and then? Uh, that will be in Bosch 2.0. The 2.0, don't start me on that shit. <laughs> all right, uh, Jeff, on the other end of the spectrum. Why doesn't HP use Bosch? <laughs> So, yes, and you can I, tell the short story of why. You, I mean, you can I, I'm you the anti-Bosch. Uh, I've been in the Cloud Foundry community since uh, VMware open sourced it in 2011. We did play uh, with the initial Bosch release when it was open sourced in, in 2012. So it's, it's a bit of a philosophical perspective. We believe in Cloud Foundry, the workload, awesome workload automation uh, and other features. But we just want that to be a product in customer hands. Uh, we don't want to need an army of consultants who uh, have made some great businesses, doing a good job, beating Bosch into shape. But you know, we're, we were a product company. We are still a product company uh, in, in HPE. And our focus is Cloud Foundry. Not, not how do you get there, but I just want Cloud Foundry up working for my developers, and I want it up this week, not in the two weeks it's gonna take for you to get the manifests and everything working in our network. So uh, that's the approach we've taken, you know, VM-based currently. Uh, for those who saw- I, I have a question later on, it might help you. Okay. You can flesh it out then. Um, Container-based uh, is what we're working on. A lot of, uh, some people may have seen it. Uh, represented earlier, that's been open sourced. And our focus is basically that uh, Cloud Foundry is the product, not Bosch. And you know, it's not an animosity towards Bosch as a product, but it's just too much complexity for when you're just trying to deliver Cloud Foundry as a workload to the customer. Um, excellent, thank you very much. And um, Stormy. I have to be honest, Colin put you on that seat so I could ask you this specific question. I, I just forgot, I have to go do something. That's right. <laughs> that is, this, is, this, is, this is the specific question Colin gave me to ask you. Stormy, why isn't everyone using Bosch? I don't know, why aren't they? I'll put that in context. You are the developer evangelist and, and advocate for, for Cloud Foundry and all of Bosch. <laughs> I'll restate the question. 
why isn't everyone using Bosch? I believe everyone will be using Bosch. And I think it will take everybody in this room and many others outside of this room to make that happen. And when I think about it from a building community perspective, I think there's two ways we have to build the community. One, we have to make this community, the community of hardcore users and developers and contributors stronger. So we need more technical talks, more people in the forums, more people becoming friends with each other, building this community. And then we need to reach more users. And to do that, we need each of you to go out and speak about Bosch. Um, so you need to go to places where people aren't already Bosch fans and speak about it. Whether it's your local meetup, it can be the API meetup or the PaaS meetup, um, whether it's a conference, um, a technical conference that's not a Cloud Foundry conference or not a Bosch conference. We need everybody in the room. If each one of you gave one talk a year and convinced one person to move to Bosch, like we would have the, the pyramid network thing. So like, so like at next Chef Conf, you put in a talk about uh, Chef, like Chef Plus or something like that, and when you arrive, you give a talk on Bosch. <laughs> like, that's what you're saying, isn't it? Yeah, you should also want, you know. <laughs> no, any, any other ideas? No, I, I, the, it, so you, you can be a little sneaky. I heard that nobody ever reads abstracts except the people picking the talks. So as long as your title is reflective, your audience won't be disappointed. All right, so you oh. lie about the topic and the speaker. Yeah. And then, all right, gotcha. Advanced ideas, I appreciate them. Jan, uh, so the summit story has been about multi-cloud, OpenStack CPI product manager. Is Bosch and Cloud Foundry, is it actually multi-cloud yet? Or what, what have we, where are we at with that? Sure, we, we have um, actually a deployment on AWS and on OpenStack, so we are using it multi-cloud. And can you give us a summary of where the other CPIs are at? Do you know? Or Dimitri can just fill in. You got, I mean, it's now a panel, I mean. Sure, I can fill in. Uh, well, vSphere, one of the oldest CPIs. Uh, actually, probably before Pivotal moved over to AWS, we've been using vSphere for some production Cloud Foundry. AWS, that's where PWS is running. Great place to run. Uh, we now have uh, you know, Azure, that's recently been uh, published as a supported CPI. I believe a few of our customers are already running on Azure. Uh, GCP is coming up. Google has been working at it based on Fergie's work, and uh, that's also going to be coming up probably within a month. We'll be adding it, we'll be adding it to Bosch.io. <clears throat> then, of course, we have OpenStack. So OpenStack has been uh, one of the uh, you know, first and uh, <laughs> somewhat struggling, but uh, you know, favorite CPIs, given that it's uh, we have to work with SAP guys, and uh, that's been always fun. Yeah. Thank you, Dimitri. Oh, my bad, my bad. Oh, jeez. That is this thing called Softlayer. Uh, from IBM, they've been actually hard at work at it. Uh, I believe they're going to be publishing, or actually already published the CPI to Bosch.io. Stem cells coming up soon. Uh, yeah, that's, I guess, uh, that's the official list today. There's, did you say Photon? Man. Photon, uh, another platform from uh, VMware, uh, very similar to vSphere, but has its own advantages. That's also coming up soon. I believe uh, there's some pending emails I have to read. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> bare metal, RackHD, that's another CPI. Uh, EMC worked on it. So, uh, you, know, we've, you know, we wanted to support something more uh, outside of a usual range of uh, IASIS. So RackHD is a software that allows you to provision bare metal machines. So that also works, actually surprisingly with OpenStack uh, stem cell currently. Uh, I think that's it. Any, anyone else anyone making else? one? Yeah. <laughs> well, while we're on the list. So I know you actually sound like it's a laboriously long list. A year ago, we were struggling to maintain the three we had and you started the, the external CPI work. In, and that's all ballpark. How's that, you know, is it? Yeah, I think that paid off. Uh, we have, you know, Azure and Google and Softlayer, Rackage DCPIs. I don't think that would be pretty much impossible to, you know, make them, you know, be inside Bosch. So externalizing it paid out, I think, uh, pretty good dividend. So, yeah. Um, all right, question for everyone. We'll start with Jeff, because he has an answer. 
If we took Bosch away from everyone, 2016, how would you deploy Cloud Foundry? You pick up Staccato and uh, go. Um, so I missed your interest. So you said so you said you open sourced what you guys have been using for the last. The uh, yeah, I was presented. Um, it, it's actually the next generation stuff that we open sourced, uh, and it's so the the, the current generation is is a VM deployment, so you have like the stem cell. Everything's on it, right? You got all your Cloud Foundry, you, you make a hundred of them. It, uh, it's not master slave, it's hive mind, and, and you go, that's it, it's, it's VMs. And you know, honestly, going into a customer, they already all have their own ways in working with virtual machines. Uh, and and you, you simplify the, that shim layer of what they need to deal with, whether it is going to be Chef, Ansible, Puppet, CSA, you know, we, people work with it in, in all sorts of different ways. Uh, all of the, the Cloud Foundry, essentially we're taking all of the Bosch stuff and distilling it to those few variables you need. And I think the, the, the reasons for why we've taken that approach and the work that we've done was Matt represented it perfectly well. It's uh, an insane amount of complexity that you really don't want to put in front of a, of a customer and for a consumer of what they want for Cloud Foundry, you can distill most of the Bosch stuff into a few config variables. So why is that not the way that most people pick it up? Um, and you know, looking forward, and which was what was open sourced, Cloud Foundry as a workload orchestration fits perfectly well into just a series of containers. And there are a lot of great container orchestration frameworks which have come up and you know, maybe Bosch will be more ubiquitous in a few years. I love the vision of Bosch 2.0, but it's not all there yet. And again- Hey, we're at yeah. Bosch 1.31, <laughs> whatever it was. Yeah, I'm waiting for the 6180. Um, the- uh, Sweet. Yeah, so, so you, you know, what, what you would then have is, is pretty much the future vision that was presented by Matt is actually how we're already using Cloud Foundry as a workload, is that one step deploy and a few config right, changes. Right. And the thing you open source, does it work? Yes. And are you using that was it? A, there was a great video of, of that at the, at the booth of it showing running over a week as people were, as, as a chaos. I was nervous to approach it. the HP booth at, <laughs> for numerous reasons. Um, Jan, take Bosch away, how are you deploying Cloud Foundry? Well, the short answer is you can't. I have recent versions of the master and develop branch on my machine and know how to build and maintain it. But the somewhat longer answer is that we would have to come up with something else. I don't know what. We've no interest in doing that. Well, this but is the conversation. I mean, they want to know. If, what? If you, what? Had to, if you had to run Cloud Foundry tomorrow, you've got all the, the yeah. C, you know, Cloud Controller repos, all the raw Diego repos yeah. and everything. Yeah. How would, what, and no Bosch. And no Bosch. Yeah, probably we would come up with something, right? Like we probably would. rebuilding Bosch or probably. looking at containers, maybe that is an approach if you don't have Bosch. But I mean, we, we use Bosch. It's it's kind of the canonical tool to deploy Cloud Foundry. That's it's gone. our reason I, to use it's it. Gone. I know it's gone. It's gone. You said that. Okay. We have a problem. It's, it's open source. It's because you're working for Jeff now and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I, sh I should be clear. We actually do use the Bosch manifest the Bosch releases. We use those artifacts. All right, so you take those and you put We take those pipeline. and distill them in awesome. through the pipeline so that they sort of disappear from the, from the customer perspective. Cool. So my first response is the same thing. It's open source, so you can't take it away from me. Denial. Thank goodness. Dr. Denial, Nick, it's gone. Dr. Nick cannot steal my my open source Bosch from me. Um, but my first computer science professor in college told me that everything is better the second time it's written. So if you took Bosch away from me, I would hold a Bosch technical day, I would invite all of you, and we would rewrite Bosch, which would be a little scary, but we could do it. What, what, what version would it have? Do, do we get to start with uh, Bosch 2.0? Um, you got to start again from scratch. You had to deploy Cloud Foundry. What do you build? Well, I didn't start it, right? Can't take uh, the credit. No, but I, I took it away from you. <clears throat> what do you do tomorrow? Um, 
How would you build? Okay, I mean, take this conversation. I don't people. know. Maybe maybe go to Hawaii, relax a bit. <laughs> Worst panel people ever. Yeah, worst, I mean, worst questions, I'd, maybe. I'd, I'd really, you know, like to everyone to consider that. Great, Bosch is there. You can use it. It's it's very difficult. They're trying to make it better. But if you were to look at the system, if you if your end goal is just Cloud Foundry, um, why recreate a lot of the? It's not you know necessarily Bosch. You have to have a definition of your system somehow. But there is then Bosch, the actual tool deployment, keeping things up and running, self-healing. Um, and, and to be honest, uh, there are some great other tools that have, even though they are newer, at least in name, newer than Bosch, you know, Kubernetes, a great place to place Cloud Foundry. Mesos, also another good one, has a lot of the features that if you've containerized Cloud Foundry... Would you use the Kubernetes on. Bosch release to bring up Kubernetes, or how would you... Yeah, so it always goes back to, you know, a circle, right? What, how you install Kubernetes, how you install Mesos, how do you update it, how do you patch it the second day, how do you manage the rest of the Starts stuff, with RVM, right? install Ruby, uh, and then some tool. <laughs> Sorry? Is this for Jeff? Sorry, could someone say Maria's question louder? Jeff? Uh, so there, there is, there is uh, day zero bootstrapping that we do. And that's, that, that depends on your infrastructure. So yes, there is still a, a shim layer there, but it is relatively trivial compared to the, the runtime and the upgrades. Again, it's containers. We use Docker. We use Docker images, Docker layers, and that kind of stuff. So we obviate some of the other more difficult parts by using some of the uh, existing o other open source projects. Gotcha. Hey, Dimitri, so in, in the five-year future idea, can you imagine that, that the individual, you know, the processes, jobs, the, the, the bits inside of VM being containerized? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, replacement of Monit, for example, now that all distributions, including Ubuntu, have, you know, system D. It's probably the next job supervisor that the agent is going to be using is systemd. Sorry, who's the one person in the room that likes systemd? I love systemd! <laughs> so yeah, that, that's, that's most likely going to be the next, you know, replacement of, of Monit, right? And so with that, I guess you get some of the other features. Uh, and including that, you know, you can containerize your workloads. Um, you know, and you know, Bosch is fairly generic, right? There's all these abstractions about storage networking volumes. I don't have a, you know, public repo at this point, but I've written a Docker CPI, for example, that you just use Bosch to deploy anything that Bosch can deploy to Docker containers. So Is that CPI really, public? It's not right now, but, you know, could open source it, I guess. Um, there are two versions of Dimitri's GitHub repo. There's the public one, and then there's the incremental things where he shares them with you. <laughs> so it's a like, yeah, it's, it's, private it's SSH one, and I looked at it the other day. It's still private. So uh, yeah, separate subscription list paid. <laughs> <laughs> Trying a little, little extra cash on the side from Pivotal. I have to get to Hawaii somehow. Is there a, a question for the panel from the audience? Maybe, I don't know. I, <laughs> no, I don't think anyone, any of our customers is going to be paying for that. So. You need a Bosch build pack <laughs> with Monit inside it so it can run jobs, and I can't see how that couldn't work. Actually, uh, do, do you know one of the Star Convey in... Uh, they haven't done that. It sounds awesome. <laughs> Ruben did something like that. Oh, he was running... That's right. He was running Cloud Foundry. He was running Bosch on Cloud Foundry, wasn't he? That's right. For his dozer. Hey? How much time we got? One minute. I'll ask my final question then. And we'll start with Mr. Negative. At your next job, would you use or advocate for the use of Bosch? 
Um, I would review it again as, as we do as we do do every uh, couple of years. Uh, I like what I see in in the 2.0 in the future, uh, but I want to see it actually hard code in my hands. So but that would be by changing the version number. <laughs> <laughs> There, there, there's a little more to go to, to get to the level of simplicity that's being promised. Yep. Jan? If it's about distributed system provisioning, yes. I, would I don't mean for running toasters or anything, but yeah, in the same sort of, <laughs> for running your systems, you know. Yeah, sure, I would. Stormy? I would, and the reason is all the people that are sitting in the room and all the people that are behind Bosch, like when there's a community behind something, you know there's something really there. Um, not just support and people willing to take it on, but like you believe in it and there's reasons. If it makes sense, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, please put or your you hands up for a panel. 